Hello friends, today in this video I am going to discuss about the western blotting. Western blotting is principally similar to the southern blotting and northern blotting. But the main difference is in southern blotting we identify specific DNA molecule and in northern blotting we identify specific RNA molecule and here in western blotting we identify specific protein molecule from a mixture of protein present in a tissue or cell okay so here in western blotting the term western come from southern blotting to show the similarity or relations relation between the western blot and southern blot okay and the blotting is a, is a process which is used to transfer the biological molecular biological sample like dna rna or protein from the gel from the gel to the membrane and then the protein is identified on the membrane okay now what is the principle of western blotting western blotting can be done by direct detection method or by indirect detection method in direct detection method suppose three types of proteins are present on a membrane okay and these proteins are isolated from the tissue or cell okay and we raise and suppose we raise an antibody against this protein a so when we add this antibody on the membrane it will specifically bind to this protein antigen a and to get the signal that whether this protein a is present on the membrane or not and whether this antigen antibody interaction is occurred or not so we so we get to get the signal we link or conjugate an enzyme to the antibody and when we add some substrate of this enzyme it will convert this substrate to a colored product and then we can visualize this colored product and we can interpret that this protein a is present on the membrane and it specifically bind with this antibody okay so this direct it is called a direct detection method and this is called direct detection method because we get the signal directly from the from the this from this antigen antibody interaction okay so now in indirect detection method in indirect detection method suppose three types of proteins are present and we raise an antibody against this protein protein antigen a and this protein and this primary antibody is called anti a antibody so when we add this primary antibody it will specifically bind with the protein a and then we raise another antibody against now against the primary antibody this is called the secondary antibody it specifically bind with the primary antibody specifically bind with the primary antibody of the fc region of primary antibody so now this secondary antibody is called the anti anti a antibody okay and to get the signal we conjugate an enzyme to this secondary antibody so when we add some substrate it convert it to the colored product and then we can visualize it and interpret that this protein a is present on the membrane as well as on the tissue or cell so it bind specifically bind with the anti anti primary antibody okay and now this in this is called indirect and indirect detection method because we get the signal which is not directly from the binding of antibody to the antibody to the protein antigen because we get the signal from the secondary antibody which is not directly bind to the protein antigen a okay and that's why this is called the indirect detection method and remember that indirect detection method is more useful and sensitive than direct detection method because this secondary antibody amplify the signal and this is very sensitive so that it is very useful for detection of a protein okay so that's why we basically use indirect method in western blotting okay now i will discuss about the whole procedure of western blotting step by step okay at first we have to extract the protein from the tissue or cell so that is the protein extraction and this is done by cell lysis 
So we have to lyse the cell so that the all components containing the protein come into the solution. Okay. So this cell lysis is done by blender, homogenizer and by sonication. Okay. And detergent and buffer is also added to the cell suspension so that the cell lysis process is increased. Okay. And after cell lysis, all the cell components containing the proteins come into the solution. Okay. And then we have to inhibit the protease and phosphorase activity which can cleave or degrade the protein molecules. Okay. So we have to inhibit this protease and phosphorase activity and then we have to centrifuge, we have to done centrifugation to separate the protein molecules from other cell components. Actually, centrifugation is a spinning, spinning process which is used to separate high molecular weight high molecular weight uh, particles from the low molecular weight particles and high molecular weight particles separate more uh, fast than low molecular weight particles okay and here the high molecular weight other cell components precipitate out here and the protein present in the solution or supernatant okay and remember that when we increase more we increase the centrifugal force more smaller size of particles are separated okay and now when now here all proteins of the tissue or cell present in the in this supernatant okay and now we have to collect this supernatant and separate the all these proteins according to their size so to separate them we have to add into the sds page that is a SDS means sodium dotical sulfate that is a detergent which disrupt the secondary and tertiary structure of the protein and page means polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis here gel electrophoresis is done to separate proteins according to their molecular weight and molecular weight on the polyacrylamide gel okay so here here uh, higher molecular weight proteins migrate less and present on the upper portion of the polyacrylamide gel and the lower molecular weight proteins go migrate more on the polyacrylamide gel and present on the lower portion of the polyacrylamide gel okay after separating proteins according to their molecular weight by sds page then the proteins present in the polyacrylamide gel are transferred to the nitrocellulose membrane or polyvinylidin difluoride that is the PVDF membrane okay and this is called the blotting or transfer process and then the identification of specific protein is done by adding antibodies okay so now the question is why blotting is done the answer is in poly in polyacrylamide gel the antibodies cannot migrate very easily and so they cannot bind efficiently with the protein and that's why we have to transfer the proteins from the polyacrylamide gel to the nitrocellulose or PVDF membrane so that the binding or antigen antibody interaction can occur more efficiently okay so now after blotting is done then this whole nitrocellulose or PVDF membrane is stained with Pons of S or Coma C blue. This staining is done to check the transfer, check whether the, whether the transfer is done or not and to check the transfer efficiency. Okay, so as this dye can interfere with the binding of antibody and detection, that's why after after checking the transfer efficiency then we have to remove this dye from the nitrocellulose or PVDF membrane okay so now come to this blotting technique blotting can occur by two types two process okay capillary blotting and electro blotting capillary blotting is a simple process where the transfer of protein from the gel to the membrane is done by capillary action only by capillary action okay and in electroblotting the transfer of protein from the gel to membrane is done by 
applying a current so this is a very fast process and remember that the electromagnetic is more useful because it take less time and transfer efficiency of electromagnetic is more high okay that's why we mostly use electroplotting okay now look at this this is the whole blotting apparatus okay here the gel is present where all proteins are present and here the membrane that is PV, pvdf or nitrocellulose membrane is present now when we apply current which go upwards then the proteins present in the gel go upwards into the membrane and get stuck in the same position where the gel where the, they present in the gel they get stuck at the same position in the membrane okay no. so after so after complete of this blotting process and uh, uh, another thing is that the sponge and filter paper is present in both side of the membrane and gel because to make a good contact between the membrane and gel so that the transfer can occur very easily okay and after after completion of blotting technique then we have to block the nitrocellulose membrane nitrocellulose pvdf membrane now the question is why blocking is done okay because the protein what we want to detect and that, that means the target protein and the antibodies which are also a protein so both have the same affinity for the nitrocellulose membrane so when after now when we add antibodies to the nitrocellulose membrane they can bind with the specific target protein and also non specific to the nitrocellulose membrane like here here like all of this nitrocellulose membrane by non specific binding because all because the antibodies are also protein and they have also they have an affinity for the nitrocellulose or pvdf membrane okay so to eliminate this non specific binding we have to block whole nitrocellulose membrane by blocking agent like bsa that is the bovine serum albumin or dry milk powder okay so so now the whole nitrocellulose membrane is blocked and then we can add antibody okay so here look at this the nitrocellulose membrane and polyvinyl polyvinylidene difluoride the this nitrocellulose membrane is cheaper but it is fragile than the polyvinylidene fluoride so we basically use pvdf membrane for western blotting for the blotting technique okay now after blocking the pvdf membrane with blocking agent then we have to add primary antibody to the membrane now the primary antibody can specifically bind to the target protein okay and some prim some primary antibody are present in the membrane which are unbound state present here like anywhere they can present okay so we have to remove this unbound primary antibody so we have to wash with pvs that is the phosphate buffer saline we have to wash with pvs so that the unbound primary antibody is removed and now we have to add secondary antibody to the membrane and secondary antibody is specifically bind to the primary antibody and make a complex like this and this secondary antibody is linked with a enzyme molecule okay so when we add substrate they make a product which we can which give the signal that whether protein is present or not so the process is like this this is the target protein and here let me change the color this is the primary antibody and then we add the secondary antibody against this primary antibody and this secondary antibody is bound with a 
enzyme molecule and then when we add any substrate it convert to the substrate molecule to a product which give the signal okay so here as a enzyme molecule we use horse radish peroxide that is hrp and alkaline phosphatase so these two type of enzyme can be used as a to use to attach with the secondary antibody previously okay so when we at the end when we and depending on the enzymatic enzymatic molecule we give different type of substrate to the nitrocellulose or pvdf membrane okay so substrate may be chromogenic fluorogenic or chemiluminescent okay when we add chromogenic substrate they give a color which can be visualized directly in the nitrocellulose membrane okay and then we can interpret okay and when we use fluorogenic substrate then it give a fluorescence which is detected by spectrophotometry okay and chemiluminescent substrate give chemiluminescence and then when we add a photographic plate photographic plate on the nitrocellulose membrane or pvdf membrane then it give a spot on the photographic plate and there and then we can detect that the protein is present on the membrane okay so this is the whole process for procedure of western blotting okay so now what are the applications of western blotting western blotting is performed for hiv test okay so here in hiv test the western blot is performed to know whether the serum of infected hiv cells contain anti hiv antibody or not okay and if the infected hiv infected cell contain the anti hiv antibody in the serum then we can conclude that the this person is hiv infected okay so now so now uh, there are another two applications present where we use western blotting that is uh, hepatitis b test and blood doping test is used where we can use western blotting okay so thank you for watching this video